crypto millionaire just ruined his life. Oh, just ruined his life live. Oh, he's doing a live stream and ruined his life. That's crazy. Let's see. One year ago, this man sued me federally because he didn't like that I called him out for scamming his audience. It was a textbook slap lawsuit. Then he laughed at me when I tried to raise funds to fight his BS lawsuit. And at this time, he was bragging about buying Lambos, rocking full Gucci track suits, and having more than like $10 million in crypto. But the other night, a video of his came up in my timeline where he was begging for money from his audience because he couldn't afford to pay $20 in gas. So I humbly ask that you donate to uh, your RC20 address. Ethereum or stable coins. Stable coins would be best, but it. Jesus Christ. This guy looks like a diet Ethan Klein. And he just quite possibly might be more retarded. Whatever you want to donate is fine. If you have other stuff you want me to list addresses, a you know, Bitcoin address or something, I can do that too. Uh, stable coins, like I said, are, are the easiest right now. So we're trying to fund the legal fund. Um, they took the Lamborghini, so I couldn't sell it, <laughs> like, obviously. My initial response to this was, is this a joke? The dude was wearing a Rolex in the thumbnail of his last video. But no, it's actually real, and he's already raised over six figures. And there's a massive update to this story, because he also live-streamed himself showing up to the house of an ex-co-worker with the woman he was cheating on his wife with, and then he got arrested live. In Carlos's house. This is where Carlos lives, guys. I am live-streaming from Carlos's house. What is even going on? Oh, so you're doxing people anymore but clearly there's a lot to be talked about in today's video i haven't paid too much attention to bitboy in months starting off with i made my first video oh on that's who that is i heard about bitboy i heard of i heard his name in the sniper wolf video that we watched so that okay now i get it now now i can put a face to the reference of the name that i heard a couple of days ago or just like probably even a week ago i don't even think it's been a week since i since we watched that video and i uploaded it I get it now. Okay. On him, which was back in November of 2021. I made this because I previously saw a video of him where it was obvious that he was paid to promote a crypto coin by the name of Pamp to his audience. And I thankfully saved that video because he went on to a podcast later on to say this. I'm just saying, we, we are the most transparent channel. If people rake us over the coals for things, we do what we say that we do. And you're over here saying that I shill coins and, and that yesterday you were saying like we just go and we say uh, you know go buy this and we sell bags never in the history of this channel have i done that not one time not one single time have i ever done that so i made my video stating that in my opinion he was a dirt bag because he promoted garbage like this here's a quick clip of that for context he simply cannot be trusted with financial advice because you don't know if he's trying to enrich you or himself here's a prime example of that so he made a video a while back on a token or a cryptocurrency where the price could only go up what I told you there's a project guaranteed to increase in price i know anytime someone starts a sentence with what if i told you it's probably bullshit that's just been my experience throughout i don't know just i don't know life and having a brain and having common sense anytime anyone starts a sentence with what if i told you right that you could do this 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 and this is that something you might be interested in it's probably bullshit, Doug. Yo, Sko, what's going on, man? You would probably want to jump in, but I'm sure the first thought you would have would be, wait a second, that doesn't sound right. Well, this is probably where we get into right. the complicated gray areas of decentralized finance. What was that, big boy? A project that's guaranteed to go up in price? Let's see where this project is today. Wow. Would you look at that? His response to that was to then send multiple people to my house and give me multiple cease and desists. And this is after he bullied multiple smaller YouTube channels to delete their videos on him. But I decided to stand my ground because I believe that my video helped people understand that he was getting paid to sell absolute garbage investments. So what happened next was not fun at all. I was served a lawsuit by BitBoy improperly because the dude opened my door and threw the lawsuit at me. And that couldn't have been worse timing because I was about to have my firstborn child like within 24 hours of being served. So I needed to record a video and try to raise funds to help me fight this because the lawyer that I had said, hey, this, if it dragged on for long enough, could run you about half a million dollars. So my game plan was to sell my house, liquidate investments, and see how much I could crowdfund from you guys. So I posted my video and I raised about $14,000 from you guys in the first couple of hours. I was absolutely blown away. And meanwhile, this is what BitBoy was tweeting. The 16-year-olds are in full force today. Good thing their attention spans are 4.2 seconds. I'm sure they can all borrow borrow a $10 mom from their mom's purse to help you out, bud. When will folks figure out everything you try to do to hurt me only helps me? Then why are you fucking losing your mind? Why are you being a little bitch boy? 
you know, you're missing, you're actually missing two, two key letters out of your name. BitBoy? No, 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 no. You forgot the C and the H, dog. It's Bitch Boy. When will folks figure out everything you try to do uh, to hurt me only helps me? Why are you bitching then? Why are you suing people? Why are... That, people like this make no fucking sense. Make no fucking sense. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I swear. I'm fine. While they seethe with anger in the background. That makes no fucking sense. This has to be so frustrating. I just keep winning and the wins are only about to get bigger. Well, that energy wasn't in the lawsuit. You will have to find other ways to chase clout. LMAO, I will not allow it. You can't literally make up lies. And no one's chasing clout, bro. They just, they look at what you're pushing and they say, hmm, that's bullshit. That's it. Jesus Christ. You, you have a product. You're trying to push it on people. And then someone comes in and evaluates your product. And they say, huh, your product is garbage. And then that's it. You're just mad that people are calling you out for your bullshit because at the end of the day, that's all it is. Bullshit. Accusations about people, Jeff, there are up? consequences for this because you tell two truths in one line. That doesn't excuse the lie. Hate me all you want, but at the end of the day, people will be held accountable for their lies and slander. Period. Then Kobe blessed me infinitely by donating a hundred thousand dollars, and I received. Dude, holy shit! Who? Then Kobe blessed me infinitely by donating a hundred thousand dollars, and I received roughly another hundred thousand dollars from you guys. Then suddenly his energy completely switched up because now he was worried this is actually going to go to court. We did not want this to become public. Uh, I guess when I just when you file a lawsuit, it's always it's always going to be a matter of public record. Always. What are you talking about? What you mean to say is that you wanted to intimidate and bully someone into doing what you wanted them to do, and not only did they tell you to go fuck yourself, but they actually, they actually successfully defended themselves, and you were like, oh, I actually have no case here. I I'm actually full of shit. I, I just like to throw around legal terms to, to, you know, just flex on motherfuckers and make them think that I'm capable of doing something that I'm actually not capable of. You, sir, are a big pussy bitch. That's crazy. I decided to do this back in November. Uh, I want to keep this behind closed doors. I've had another lawsuit. It was behind closed doors. And it worked out great. And I, I think that both parties were happy. What you're talking about is y'all did settlements. Yes, you can settle behind closed doors. But when you issue a lawsuit, it will always be public record. And especially unless you issue a gag order, which you would have to give, I don't, you would have to talk to a judge about that to get the other party to remain silent about said lawsuit. But you didn't do that, did you? Because you probably don't know about that, did you? That's crazy. And it was settled and, you know, everything about it worked out. I'm still confused that he thought I would be quiet about this. Yeah. I was also surprised that he said, yeah, last time I sued someone, it stayed private and we both ended up happy. Yeah, yeah because the person that you intimidated was probably intimidated like hey man i don't want to go to court because they probably didn't know not a lot of people know much about getting sued or suing or going to court or doing the legal process and all of the paperwork and paying for lawyers fees attorneys fees court fees all that stuff so they probably got scared they probably got super scared they're like okay man you know what that's fine we'll work with you atazi is not one of those people i'm sure whoever was sued from you was really happy with that obviously if this would have been public i wouldn't have done it it, not because I, I want to hide it, but- Oh, no, that's exactly what you wanted to do. You wanted to hide it. You're like the biggest bitch on the internet, probably aside from a handful of people. What we were trying to do was get him to take down the video that had factually wrong information that has implications for me as a person. And you know, when my kids go and they Google their dad, you know what comes up? A big bitch, I think. That'd be my first guess. That video. This is such a lame excuse, especially with what he's done recently. He shouldn't be worried about me. He should be worried about his own actions because yeah. he does a great job at humiliating himself all on his own. Here's where we're at, okay? Where we're at is, at this point, it has become public. It's become uh, an absolute default. We know Kobe gave him $100,000, so, uh, you know, hopefully that money will go to good use. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to drop the lawsuit 100%. And uh, I'm sorry this became public. I'm sorry that uh, this has been... Uh, you know, you only drop the lawsuit when you realize that Atazi was not going to cower to your empty threats. That's it. And that's the biggest bitch move of all right there. You essentially pulled a Mac lethal. 
you talked a whole bunch of shit, and then the person you're talking shit to started talking shit back, and then you started backpedaling. Because you're afraid to deal you're afraid to have to deal with that energy. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you fucking turd. Uh, misconstrued, but I just want you guys to understand why. Why I was doing this. This was not about, this was not about a slapstick lawsuit. I know that's what everybody says, right? No, it, you're trying to be a bully and then someone fucking punched you in the fucking teeth and now you don't want to be a bully anymore. Frivolous. It's not frivolous. When someone implies that you can be in trouble from the SEC, that is not frivolous, guys. That's a very, very, very serious, serious matter. So he said this, but then... Which is your problem. Uh, what does that have anything to do with the people that are simply saying it? They're simply just saying what it is. Just a couple months later, he had this to say when the SEC actually showed up to his door. We got a letter from the SEC last night. Oh, look at that. So all of these claims by other fucking YouTubers that are saying, hey man, you're probably gonna get fucked by the SEC. SEC is probably gonna fuck with you. SEC is probably gonna wanna have something to do with you and all that stuff. And then you get mad. That They were just telling you the truth. Really. Don't know how long it had been uh, sitting uh, waiting for me to get back. Gary Gensler has now came knocking at my door. Yo, Katai, what's up? Very scared, Gary. I'm very scared. <laughs> I will start by giving you my reaction to the SEC letter from Gary Gensler. <laughs> Clearly, for some reason, he isn't worried about the SEC. But then, for some reason, he admitted that he dropped the lawsuit because I raised money to fight it. Um, so at this point, like I said, there, there is nothing. Uh, I, I don't know if Atazi is looking confused on purpose, but I just explained why he dropped the lawsuit. It's, it's pretty easy for anyone to deduce why he dropped the lawsuit. It's just like, it, it's like, okay, imagine you're, you're, you're about to get into, you're, you're talking shit to someone, right? You're talking shit to someone. And then you're just like, I'll beat the fuck out of you. I'll fight you. I'll do this and that. And then the, the person is very, very quiet, right? And you're just talking shit, talking shit, talking shit. And then, and then finally, the person takes their fucking shirt off. You see how ripped they are. And then they get into a goddamn fucking Naruto pose, right? Like a fucking ninja. And they're just like... And then you're just like... You know what? I was just kidding. I, I was just... That was theatrical acting. I was just doing a skit, you know? I I I I want to do acting for a living. I I was just I was just seeing how you would react and stuff like that. You don't have to take me seriously, okay? I'm just I'm just I'm going to go back to my I'm going to go back home and just uh think about what I did. That's all it is, man. You talk real big and someone says, "Oh yeah," and you're just like, "Oh no." And then that's it. And really we can do. Um, you know, <clears throat> the, the money has came in on his side. Uh, the lawsuit was never about money. Um, so hopefully, you know, it tells you now that we're going to be officially dropping this. I don't, I emailed my lawyer, uh, about 15 minutes where we went on air here. So that is going to be happening. So in my opinion, he sued me because my video show and his actions made him upset. But after that whole legal debacle, since it didn't go to court, I ended up refunding. It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank, bro. That's yeah. That's, that's all it is. Jesus Christ. So much backpedaling. Absolutely everyone who donated to me. But then, moving on with the BitBoy Crypto lore, two platforms he also promoted, Celsius and FTX, both collapsed. And that's when I was like, yo, this guy's losing it. He even flew out to the Bahamas to try to find Sam Bankman Freed. And I don't really know why. It's not like he could arrest Sam, but I guess he just wanted to go out there to farm engagement because that was like the biggest thing that happened within his niche. But then, BitBoy started throwing out insane allegations towards Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, claiming and he somewhat, which is just beyond confusing because he sues me for defamation and then goes on to defame someone pretty much right after. Then, because of the collapse of FTX, there was a massive class action lawsuit suing a lot of the influencers promoting it. And naturally, BitBoy was named in it and the hinges on him really flew off for this one because he started sending out personal attack after personal attack to the opposing counsel. Here is uh, one of the emails that he sent to one of the lawyers for some reason. I don't know why he would ask. What does that say? Uh, one of the emails me getting your legal license taken is not a threat it's a it's a promise you bitch or fucker or bastard whatever's redacted there uh ben armstrong i'm assuming is legal counsel i guess um this is so ill-advised to do this is so ill-advised to do if you plan on taking someone to court you don't harass the council. You don't harass the the, the litigators. You, you don't harass the 
the jury. You don't do any, you don't harass the person suing. You don't harass the person that issued the lawsuit, the person that's receiving the lawsuit. None of that, because guess what's going to happen if this does go to court? This is going to get brought up and it is going to be used against you, man. Like, good God. And I didn't go to law school and I know this shit. Like, bruh that he sent to one of the lawyers for some reason. I don't know why he would ever do that. But then you have the whole saga around the project called Bencoin that BitBoy was shilling for a couple months. And since I haven't been paying enough to the crypto community, I'd ask Zach XBT for the- Like, dude, this, this BitBoy, why can't you just be like fucking- why can't you just be like Aiden Ross and I Show Speed? They fucking- they've scammed their audience so many goddamn times, they get called out. They just keep it pushing. Yeah, they issue a couple of copyright strikes and stuff like that, but they just keep it fucking pushing. They don't really take the time to sit there and fight with a motherfucker via the legality of anything that's going on. Like, you want to know why? Because they're fucking guilty. But you, on the other hand, not only are you guilty, but you're stupid. TLDR on that, where he said, It was meme coin season recently on crypto once again. Ben.eth created a meme coin called Ben, and within a few days, BitBoy Crypto joined the team and paid Ben.eth a few million dollars for ownership. Ben.eth then proceeded to create two more meme coins called... You remind me of like... He reminds me of just like a, a chubby version of Logan Paul. Really. Because wasn't Logan Paul suing somebody for some for some stupid shit? Well, no, technically, Logan Paul wasn't suing anybody. His wife was suing someone because someone was putting public photos of her that were already on the internet and posting them to his Twitter. And then they got mad, apparently, because apparently Logan Paul's wife is or was or used to be a whore. I don't fucking know. But that's kind of what that reminds me of, just a hair. PSYOP and Loyal. He had people participate in the pre-sale by having them blindly send money to his personal ENS address. From his tweet history, it seems like Ben.eth had zero clue about what a ledger was until last month and is commingling funds. He has retweeted like four different phishing scammers by accident now, causing followers to lose funds. People proceeded to send millions of dollars to Ben.eth for the PSYOP. Logo looks like he ripped off Pokemon. Yeah, that's essentially what Logan Paul did. Really, with some kind of fucking crypto zoo bullshit that was essentially just fucking already established already on the internet pdf files that never changed in 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 look never changed in fucking aesthetics never changed in anything but apparently you could just like evolve and shit like that i i watched a couple of the coffeezilla videos on that that's why i'm somewhat educated on what happened there with logan paul so PSYOP presale. Logo looks like he ripped off Pokemon. Upon launch, Ben.E sent out the tokens to presale participants and holds like 97% of the entire supply and was manipulating the price on Uniswap. A few days later, he announced the third presale to Loyal. People proceeded to send millions of dollars more to him, 20 million plus in total from the presales. I think he's about to send those tokens out soon. Imagine he'll be manipulated once again. Ben.E has been retweeting and vouching for a bunch of other meme coin pumps and dumps as well. Yesterday, BitBoy announced him and Ben.E for building a product utilizing the three tokens. The product is literally a Uniswap competitor and seems like a potential security. Considering BitBoy and Ben.E are both U.S. citizens, it seems like something the SEC would enjoy in the future case. Then we get to the most recent happening in the BitBoy crypto lore, which led him to asking his audience for money. And that starts with this tweet. With a BitBoy crypto account saying, Yesterday, Investment Holdings, the parent company of Hit Network, took decisive legal action in removing Ben Armstrong from the company and specifically the BitBoy crypto brand. This difficult decision has a culmination of a prolonged effort to help Ben during his relapse into since as well as reconcile the emotional, physical, and financial damages he's done. I hate how soft YouTube has become. YouTube has become so soft that creators are having to fucking censor the words substance abuse. Jesus Christ, how far we've fallen as a goddamn society. Everyone's a pussy. The employees of Hit Network. Not you, Ataza. You, you do what you gotta do because, you know, you, this is your job and stuff like that. But fuck, man. Like, ugh. It's so cringe.
BitBoy crypto community. The Bit Squad deserves better and we're going to get through this together. We wish him the best and regret that it has come of this and are hopeful for the future of BitBoy crypto. So that's definitely an odd move because I thought Ben was BitBoy. I can't really see the channel like having any long-term success without Ben because every time a YouTube channel kicks off the main personality it was built on, it, it normally fails. flops. But yeah. as we read, BitBoy- Kind of what happened to Brendan Schaub's podcast whenever fucking Theo Vaughn left. That was kind of really the only reason people tuned into that fucking podcast was because of Theo Vaughn. Brendan Schaub is a fucking retard. Ben was kicked out of the company that he created and he claims that they've taken all of his money. So he then logged into the Bencoin cryptocurrency Twitter account of his and said this. TJ Shedd and Justin Williams have attempted a coup of my company. Just confirming what's going around, it's true. There's been a mutiny at BitBoy Crypto and Hit Network, but it won't work. They have no leverage until they can clone me. I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> he then makes this video where he says this. And so today, uh, as I, you know, put 20 bucks in my gas tank earlier that I had to borrow from someone because I've been 100% cut off from all my money. All my money. Uh, Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Is that the fault of the YouTube channels that were covering your fucking sleazy behavior online trying to scam your audience? Or is there a possibility that this is all 100% your own goddamn doing? I think it's I, I think it's that. Well, that wasn't paid for the last month. Uh, that wasn't paid. It was supposed to be getting paid by people that work for me, and they didn't do it. So the credit card's maxed out. And guys, we're in a tough spot here because they're trying to make me stop fighting. And so I humbly ask that if I've ever done anything for you, if I've ever encouraged you, if I've ever left giving you a dream that you might have something different, if some of my content has helped you, or if you're on the outside of this situation looking in and you see how dirty what's happening is, then I humbly ask that you donate to uh, ERC20 address, Ethereum or stablecoin. Stablecoins would be best, but it, whatever you want to donate is fine. If you have other stuff you want me to list addresses, you know, Bitcoin address or something, I can do that too. Uh, Stablecoins, like I said, are, are the easiest right now. So we're trying to fund the legal fund. Um, they took the Lamborghini, so I couldn't sell it, <laughs> like obviously. Um, and I'm in a bad spot right here, guys. If anything, this is just sad. I don't think this is funny. If anything, I just feel bad for his family. But I'm definitely shocked in how quick things changed here because this dude had everything. And now it seems like his own actions robbed him of that. But he also tweeted out the Georgia Department of Revenue has frozen the title of my Lamborghini and are holding it as evidence. I've offered TJ and Justin a deal to stop criminal charges if they resign and walk away this weekend. Monday police report, FBI meeting also confirmed. Dude, what's happening to you? Ben is the equivalent of what happens to some to someone who builds a company and then gets pushed out by their board of directors because you're no longer good for the business. Everything they're doing is probably 100% legal and you just can't fucking take it because you're a turd. And you brought all of this on yourself. Like we've seen it we've seen it so many times. We've we've literally we've seen so many times where someone gets ousted from their company because they are just a liability to what they built. It's, it's shitty, but that's the way it goes. Firm. But it's also worth noting that he himself said that the Lamborghini was in the company name. They took Lamborghini from me because it was in the company name. And I mean, the whole feud within this company, that would need to be in a video in itself because I mean, Ben just dropped an hour long video on his own channel, plus a bunch of phone calls that he leaked from him and the people within that company. So whatever happens in that lawsuit, that's definitely going to be interesting. BitBoy's raised roughly $200,000 from what I can tell. So whatever happens here will be an absolute dumpster fire. So I spoke way too soon. I went to bed for early for once and then I was awoken from my phone just absolutely blowing up and then I checked my phone to see that everyone was texting me saying that BitBoy was apparently arrested live. So I get up and get to my computer and see that CoffeeZilla tweeted out this. You do not understand how unhinged this really is. Ben Armstrong just showed up to an ex-employee's house who he accused- If CoffeeZilla starts investigating you, it's over for you. That's just one thing I've noticed. It's over for you. You might as well, you might as well go ahead and quit while you're ahead. Uses of stealing his Lambo. He decides to bring a and the woman. Hmm. Ben Armstrong just showed up at an ex employee's Carlos's house, who he accuses of stealing his Lambo, even though you said in a recent video that the Lambo was company property and they just they confiscated it back because it belongs to the company, which you are no longer a part of. So therefore, it's not really theft, it's just a repossession. Then he's. He decides to bring a something and the woman he cheated on his wife with. 
Ben also decided to live stream it on YouTube with the title live streaming from Carlos's house where my Lamborghini is. So you're doxing people. That's that's cool. Cheating on with his wife with Ben also decided to live stream on YouTube with the title live streaming from Carlos's house where my Lamborghini is. But no one's talking about the craziest part. Ben scheduled the live stream ahead of time, meaning Carlos saw this coming miles away and surprise, surprise, called the police who immediately arrested Ben. So it was definitely safe to say when I said whatever was going to happen was going to be a dumpster fire was a massive understatement. In Carlos's house. This is where Carlos lives, guys. I am live streaming from Carlos's house. Carlos has my Lamborghini right here in his in his garage. <laughs> I am in disbelief. This is not real. How is this happening? How did we get here within the span of just one year? Let the court handle this why are you in front of this man's house i did a 40 minute live stream where i reviewed everything that happened because he was throwing out some serious allegations left and right and he name dropped like 20 people but the main part of this live stream was when the police approached him hey do me a favor yep okay stop, stop. Hey, how's it going put your phone down okay put okay. your phone down is there anybody else in the car um yeah there's who's in the car uh hey. oh what's up who's in your car Who's in my car? Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh... Who's in your car? Who's in my car? Who's in your truck, sir? Cassie is in my car. Cassie's in my truck. All right, Cassie. Oh. 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 He didn't want to answer the question of who's in his car. Why? Because the person that's in his car is not his wife. <laughs> and he's live streaming. You're about the dumbest bastard, bro. Holy shit. The self snitching is fucking unreal here. Cassie. Guys, in my truck, my wife knows that we're here, by the way. She knows we came to do this. But my wife is aware. So we're live on YouTube right now. I am speechless. He shows up to his ex coworker's house with a girl he was having an affair with to live stream an encounter with him, doxes his ex coworker, and gets arrested. This is hands down the dumbest live stream I've ever seen in my life. If he was on a mission to just make his life infinitely harder, he probably he succeeded. succeeded with yeah. this live stream. But the arrest yeah. details say that Ben Armstrong, also known as BitBoy, has officially been locked away in jail, as confirmed by the local sheriff's office. Yeah. Okay, so Liam, the officer didn't break protocol. You don't have to comply with putting your phone down, but if you do, then you do. This, this, is, a this is a case of know your rights, okay? You have to know your rights, essentially. And he did as he was told. That's just, that's just it. I don't think the officer broke protocol at all. S telling someone to put their phone down is uh, along the same lines of telling someone to turn off their vehicle during a traffic stop. Because you want the person's full attention. Get off your fucking phone, put out the fucking cigarette, turn down your music, turn off your car, step out of the fucking car. I don't think protocol was broken by the police officer. He gave him, he gave him, uh, he gave him direction and he complied with the direction. That, that, would, that, that was just it, really office in Georgia. Bitboy live streamed an incident where he attempted to steal a Lamborghini from an ex-business partner with his mistress, who he cheated on his wife with, all while being armed and under the influence. Law enforcement authorities have also discovered illegal in his vehicle. That last part makes things make a little bit more sense, but what do you even say to that? He needs help. I feel terrible for his family. There is a lot of collateral damage. And I think that telling someone to put their phone down, that's just like the officer establishing a baseline as to what he's dealing with. Put your phone down. And if someone is really going to, if someone is willing to cause a fucking stink and someone is willing to cause problems all because the officer told them to put their phone down, uh, it's one thing if the officer says, hey, you can't record. That wasn't what was said. It'd be one thing if the officer said, hey, you can't live stream this. That would be a different story. But he just said, put your phone down, put everything down so we can handle this situation in this moment in time right now. And he complied. That's it that just happened here. But it seems like this situation is so far from over. So I guess we just have to brace ourselves for whatever's going to happen next. I don't know why you put it that way, Atazi. I'm not bracing myself for shit. I'm not the idiot here. People ruin their lives all the time. I'm good. He's the one that needs to brace himself. He's about to go to jail on some stupid shit. 